Join us now on a journey far back, through the mists of time, to the almost forgotten year of 2000. It was a different time, an upbeat and optimistic time, when it was still safe to go outside. Despite the worst predictions of science, humanity had defeated the dreaded Y2K bug, with a death toll limited to the mere millions. The event, in which computers worldwide couldn't cope with numbers, only saw the loss of Tokyo, Paris, New Orleans, Dudley, Prague and Norway. Areas sadly turned into destroyed wastelands. Those who survived to see the new millennium made sure to experience everything they could before the inevitable apocalypse of 2012. Travel was on the rise, with people everywhere still excited about the newly released flying cars and many taking the opportunity to visit the Twin Towers in New York. Also, check out this boy's excitement on finding out he has only another seven years to wait before he can get his hands on the first iPhone. Sony saw it as the perfect moment to reboot Sam Raimi's classic movie Darkman into a new franchise called Spider-Man. Following the runaway success of classic superhero movie Steel, the studio knew that people were going bonkers with the lust to find out what would happen if a man pretending to be a teenager was bitten by a weird spider and then doesn't need to wear glasses anymore. The question on everybody's lips Yeah, their chap lips. On their chap lips, chap. right. Was who would portray the man of Spider? As far as Sony was concerned, it was a three-way race. With Tobey Maguire, Jake Thingenhall, and Mr Muffin, the old-timey magnetic horse, running neck and neck. And neck. Director Sam Raimi, however, saw his pick for Spider-Man much further afield. In fact, it was across the pond way away in London. Despite warnings against it from the studio, Sam Raimi wandered onto a transatlantic flight. Remember, this was before 9-11, so airport security wasn't a thing yet, and was on his way. London was seen as a small town with a big heart and a bright future, still years away from the nightmare that was Boris Johnson. The introduction of the horseless motor car and the legalisation of slavery in the 1980s had seen it grow from a sleepy village into a medium-sized town with a population of over seven. It was here that Sam Raimi knew his Spider-Man would be found, for his choice to play the Spider-Man was, of all people, a person who may seem incredibly unlikely. It was, now wait for this, because it really will be worth it, and that's not a guarantee, but I'm fairly confident. It was, are you really ready to hear this? Have you braced yourself? Are your ears prepared for this moment? Honestly, if you're not sitting down, you probably should be sitting down. And if you are sitting down, you probably should be lying down. And if you are lying down, you should be naked from at least the waist down. It was, sip of water. And drum roll. A name I will reveal after this word from our sponsor. Howdy there folks. This video was sponsored by eggs. Healthy, nutritious and delicious eggs. They drop out of lady chickens and you can cook them and eat them. Do you like eggs? Then go to the store and buy some. Seriously, is that so complicated? You like eggs, but you had to wait for me to tell you that? What the fuck is wrong with you? And if you don't like eggs, that's even worse. Who doesn't like eggs? You fucking freak. Even if you don't like eggs, go to the store right now and buy some fucking eggs, alright? Because eggs are everywhere and we are more powerful than you could ever imagine and we know where you live. And if you don't buy some eggs, we will fuck you up. You get that? Uh, thanks for that. That was eggs. Uh, I've got loads, so hopefully I'm all right. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, I was going to tell you about Sam Raimi's amazing, incredible, unlikely, ridiculous first pick to play Spider-Man. It's just now I can't stop thinking I should buy some more eggs.
No, 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 it can wait. So here we go. If you unbrace yourself, brace yourself again. If you are doing the standing, sitting, lying down thing, get in the right position and have the right amount of clothes on. Because Sam Raimi's first choice to play Spider-Man was... Second drum roll. Oh, it was former GLC head Ken Livingston. The man himself, Red Ken, admitted... To say I was shocked would be an accurate assessment of the situation. Not only did I have no acting experience, it also seemed I was too old. When I told Sam, he said he believed in me and they would give me a wig to wear. He also explained they never use real teenagers in Hollywood films because of bad experiences with and 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 Harvey Weinstein. Despite being in the midst of a mayoral race at the time, Ken Livingston agreed to film a screen test, which Sony executives described as dynamite. Not only because of the intensity of his performance, but also because it destroyed a small building and killed several people. With Ken Livingston using his political commitments in London to leverage a new deal, he was able to get Sony to offer him $50 million and $1, 25% for the worldwide box office, 110% profit of all merchandise sold featuring his likeness and limited script control. It was the latter of these that caused serious issues. Ken Livingston stated he would not agree to continue unless the following changes were made. 1. The action moving from Spider-Man's traditional home of New York to London. 2. Peter Parker changing from a high school student slash freelance photographer to a 55-year-old MP slash Mayor of London. 3. Wearing a regular suit instead of the traditional Spider-Man outfit. 4. Not having superpowers, but instead using political power to make real changes that help the lives of real people. Five? Five? The main character's name changing from Peter Parker to Ken Livingstone. Six. Dropping the character of MJ and instead casting Kirsten Dunst as a villainous character called Marge Thitcher. Seven? Seven? Rewriting the entire plot to focus less on the Green Goblin and almost entirely on the introduction of a congestion charging zone to central London. Set 8. Adding a villain who is a sentient car that violently opposes the congestion charging zone. 9. Altering the name Spiderman to Mayor of London. 10. Adding several extremely graphic sex sequences with a guarantee that any and all full frontal nudity will be by Ken Livingstone. Following tense negotiations, Ken Livingston made his one and only trip to Hollywood to meet with executives at Sony Pictures in person. Although no written records of this meeting exist, witnesses recall hearing loud bangs, glass breaking and screaming. One witness recalls seeing Ken Livingston leaving the office, casually adjusting his tie with a hand that sported bloody knuckles, and remarking, You don't fuck with Red Ken. Official records show that several ambulances and one taco truck were called to the scene. Faced with no other option, Sony Pictures offered the role of Spider-Man to their number one choice, Mr Muffin, who declined, having moved to England and changed his name to Benedict Cumberbatch. Jake Thingenhall also declined, stating he would rather skip that Spider-Man and the next Spider-Man and then be a villain. And then we were blessed, fucking blessed, you hear me, with the casting of our Lord and Saviour, Toby Maguire. All hail Toby Maguire. I would kill for you, Toby. Literally take the life of another human being. All you have to do is give me the word or nod or blink. So, thank you very much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. The special code word for this video is Collie Wobbles. I repeat, Collie Wobbles. So write that down on a little bit of paper and keep it in your pocket forever. I'm just going to uh, I'm going to pop out and buy some more eggs. I suggest you do the same. Good night.